Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the weeks-long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Oh, at last. I'm quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. Hey, Sherry, come on, catch up. Yes, yes. Welcome to Il Palazzo Deluso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. If you need something, sir, please Welcome inquire at reception. Welcome to Il Palazzo Deluso, sir. We just need your signature. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view.
<laughs> Those are the sharp eyes of a man with a bright mind. Almost like mine. Whoa, what a breathtaking man. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Let's check what they have on offer. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Batch, our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone hey, Sherry, loves Benedict's just Batch, our, luck. our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. A medium, John, haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me? Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir, it's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. <laughs> Sherry, I'm over here with my new Ursine companion. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well, then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? 
Stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow. Perhaps the Fielding family or meadows. Or Craven, from the old English name meaning garlic place. <laughs> the hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right, I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Help me, please. Of course. Stop me when you've had enough. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. Not that one, huh? You lost the bet, Sherry, but don't let that stop your search for the Navy officer. May I ask you something? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Hey. 
Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. I didn't see the owner, Sherry, so I can't help you find him. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot, it's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke! A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? 
To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred, exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret. I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. The diamond was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm? The ghost was here, Sherry! Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. What happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose this can wait. I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But the stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Uh, perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Ah, uh, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind, Palace Sherry. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions.
It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. I didn't take the diamond, I swear. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly... Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. The feebleness of women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. Oh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. Size four with a broken heel. Size four with a broken heel. Rose de Moore. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. So definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless. <sighs> no. What a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. Excuse me, just one question. Hmm. You look like an honorable man. I have some information for you. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? A precious diamond was stolen during the seance. Lord Craven entrusted me with its recovery. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but we are forbidden to discuss the private matters of our guests. Hmm. Are you also forbidden from peeking into private rooms, Miss... Saletta. Lucia Saletta, sir. Tell me, Miss Saletta, what would your manager say if he knew you were spying on guests? I 
Oh, please, sir, don't tell him. I have a family. I need this work. I won't, but only if you answer my questions truthfully. And don't play coy. I can tell. Describe what happened during the seance. Uh, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest, a glowing cloud or, or a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did she? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost, a sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? <laughs> the, the medium, Mr. Galici, he was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. <laughs> and then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right. I have your account memorized. Good day. Oh, you scared the poor girl, Sherry. Did she really deserve that? We all got what we wanted. She talked. I stay silent. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? Thank you.